We are at the Engineers Club in Dayton, Ohio with Angel Zaponte. She's the banquet manager here. And Angel, what kind of experiences have you had in this facility? Primarily the employees, not the members, have had a lot of experiences. Me personally, my most recent was kind of fun. The, uh, the ghosts here have been known to do a lot of things in the kitchen. And later on you'll probably get a shot of our industrial coffee maker that's all metal. So the baskets are metal, they fit into a metal machine. Mm -hmm. And they have before gone flying across the room when both chefs have been in the kitchen. Just, well, I was the last one to leave this past Saturday. First one to come into the kitchen on Monday. And when I came into the kitchen on Monday, both of those baskets were laying on the floor about four and a half to five feet apart, all dented for where they hit the floor. That's great. So ghost stories at the Engineers Club with Angel in Dayton, Ohio. Tell me, Angel, what have been your experiences here in the library? I was working late. It was about 10.30 mm -hmm. at night, and I was the only one in the building. I was locked into the building. Mm -hmm. And I was typing away at the desk and doing some filing when I witnessed a man walk from the west side of the building down mm -hmm. the hall of the library. And it was about 45 seconds to a minute. I looked up. I saw him. 45 seconds to a minute later, nothing happened, so I went back to work. And as I'm working away, he comes walking back down the hallway from the east wing down to the west side of the building. And I looked up and I saw him again, went back working. Okay. About another minute later, he comes back down the hallway, but only this time we have glass doors mm -hmm. in the office. He came to the doors that were closed and just stood at them and stared at me. Okay. And you knew this was someone who wasn't a member or one of your crew was here? Correct, because okay. when I asked my spirit guides to get rid of him, mm -hmm. he He's vanished okay. right where he was standing. Oh, okay, you saw him disappear? Yes. Okay, and that just about confirms what you were looking at? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there was no turning around and walking back out. He was just he gone. Was, okay, good.
I see you. Get rid of him. All right. Okay, we're on the stage here at the, the Engineers Club in uh, Dayton, Ohio. This, uh, this instrument here is a digital recorder. This records EVP phenomena. Now, Ruby's been asking questions to the spirits. In this particular place right here, Patrick, what did you pick up with the EMF? A high EMF reading. Uh, in this area, we're about at 2.5 milligauss, but when we go down closer to the floor, it goes into the red and plus 20 milligauss. So we get a pretty high reading down here. So it's very localized. And we did it with the electricity off, so it's not being caused by current through the lights or anything, so we're okay. getting something here in this area. So right smack dab on this area here, we got a good strong reading. So we're going to, this, this area here is right above the kitchen. The kitchen has had a lot of activity, so we'll be go going down there next to check that out. But uh, hopefully we pick up something on the EVP recorder. If we do, you'll definitely get a chance to, to hear it. So, And this particular stage was used for educational purposes for kids on the Mr. Wizard uh, show or program. Can you explain that, Angel? What, uh, what Mr. Kettering, one of the founders of the building, he would have a Mr. Wizard program every Saturday. It was free to any of the kids in the community that wanted to come down and learn about science, math, technology. He would have a chemistry set that would pop up out of the floor, a live water and gasoline feed and electric feed. And you would do different experiments with the kids in here who wanted to learn. It was two or three hours on a Saturday. Wow, that's a long Every time. Saturday. Now, uh, the, I guess any paranormal activity in this area? Uh, any sightings or? Uh, Specifically in this room, not one specific sighting. Mm -hmm. More of people get a general sense of, hey, is this place haunted when they get right. in here? Like a, like a cold feeling or? More of they kind of can feel the pressure. Really? Like the ghosts. The ghosts are next to them. Right. Or on them or mm -hmm. getting too close. Is that members? Members and employees. Really? Mm -hmm. More so employees? I give a lot of tours here at the club and okay. there are certain spots in the building where somebody in the group will pipe up and say, is this place haunted? And this is one of those rooms. Really? Okay. All right. The, uh, like you saw before, the the uh, EMF detector picked up a red reading right where we're standing. Uh, real low to the stage below it is the kitchen. That's where we're headed next. So in the kitchen at the Engineers Club.
And we're with the Angels of Ponte in the right room at the Engineers Club. Now, Angel's got a few stories she wants to tell our viewers. So Angel, it's all yours. Okay. Um, several stories, actually, to tell about. And if I forget them, remind me, since you mm -hmm. have a, okay. a clue what they might be. I know one of the most intense stories is of our dining room manager. He was closing one night by himself. He had let everyone go in the building, and he was here alone. And he went back to the kitchen. We always do a last round to make sure the chefs didn't leave anything on. And he walked into the kitchen, and all the faucets were on, and all the doors and drawers were open. And he's walking around, closing everything, turning everything off. He's like, you guys are funny, because he thought that a server steak. And they were pulling a practical joke on him. So he turned everything off and closed everything, walked back up here to get his stuff, had to go back down to, the, to where we clock out down there, and he heard a noise. He walks into the kitchen. It was all exactly the same. All the doors and drawers were open, and all the faucets were on. He said he'd never left here so fast. He didn't bother clocking out. He just <laughs> turned everything off and ran out of the building. Did that, did that ever happen to him again after that night? Not like that, no. But he's had other experiences where he's been sitting in the dining room with another server. You know, after the building is closed for lunch, they'll sit down and they're talking and eating and a couple tables over, all the silverware will just fly off the table. Mm -hmm. Nobody else, of course, is in the dining room but them and over there the silverware flies off. He and a server, a male server, and he have had the same experience going up the steps to the old clock. They have been heading upstairs and right behind him they'll hear stair steps. And I know the one server, Bill, he's stopped and stopped. The steps behind him have stopped. And so he started again, and the steps behind him started again. Mm -hmm. So that freaked him out. He ran. Mm -hmm. He ran away. Also, the clock has been here since the building opened in 1918, and it was given to us by the Leland family. And there was a period of time when the clock mechanisms were broken, and we had to send them out of the state to get repaired since it's such an old clock. Mm -hmm. And the server, Bill, was uh, working down here, and he heard a noise. He's like, that just can't be. The clock is broken. And he walks up to the clock, and the pendulum's just a swing That's all cool. by itself. But Patrick, what was that comment you made earlier about that? Uh, yeah, it seemed kind of strange that you have a, the engineer's club, and no one here can fix the clock. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get mad at the engineers. It's just a joke. <laughs> you say that about a lot of things around here. Okay. <laughs> See, another story would be the chef has seen the lady in the polka dotted dress, which you might get a glimpse of her during the show today, as well as uh, the male chef and myself have both heard a male and a female voice talking in the stairwell from the auditorium that goes down into the kitchen. We've just heard two people just chattering away. You can't make out what they're saying, but you can hear that they're talking. Every time I give a tour in this building, I will have someone say, you know, is this place haunted? One room is the Wedgwood room, it's the blue room, it's the women's, used to be the women's lounge. Inevitably, somebody will say in that room, is this building haunted? And then, like I said, in the auditorium, they'll say it there as well. Uh, for me, the, one of the kindest things the ghosts have done is I was here by myself at night when I was closing, and I had to go all the way up, and I had run around this building probably a hundred times that day. I thought, I'm going to be lazy and take the elevator. I walked up to the elevator and it opened. I said, thank you. <laughs> that was really kind of you guys. I'm trying to think of anything else. And the, I guess the operator is manually operated, it's not automatic. The elevator? Yes. You have to push the button for it oh, to come okay. to you. And and you have to push the button on the inside for it to go to a floor. Yeah. Okay. So the fact that it arrived at the floor I was on mm -hmm. and opened for me okay. when nobody else was in the building. Nobody actuated the button for you. Just right. Okay. Also, our receptionist, she's been here 23 years. She came in one morning to open the building. And as she walked into the building, she happened to glance into the dining room because she saw a gentleman standing all the way at the other end of the dining room in a plaid shirt. And she was like, who are you? And she went running into the dining room after him. He went streaking off towards the kitchen. So she bust into the kitchen to find him, and there was no one there. Several months later, we had a DPNL man come and do some work in the basement of the building down a long corridor. And after he was done working, he came back to that same receptionist and was letting her know, you know, I finished what I was doing, all done for the day, and hey, by the way, you've got some guy downstairs in a plaid shirt. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. thought he was a real guy. Right, in that long corridor. Uh, mm -hmm. 
that's, that's kind of the eerie corridor. Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, well, the viewers will see that corridor a little bit later. It's kind of spooky. It is. It is. And I think with the uh, the ghost and the polka dot dress being in the basement, seeing you've seen the basement, perhaps that's one of the haunted areas too. Yeah. So we'll find that. And who had the experience with the mug on the table? That was, oh, the chefs in the kitchen, they are messed with all the time. I know Laura, our chef, she'll be baking, like cookies, you have to set it at a very specific temperature, and she'll leave the kitchen to go do something else, come back, and the temperature's at 450 degrees, or it's 120 degrees, and they'll move the temperature dial. They have uh, the, the coffee maker. The chefs, well, when we make coffee in the morning, we make it first thing in the morning, and until we make the next batch of coffee, we tend to forget to throw out the uh, the filter in the grounds. Mm -hmm. So it's it's heavy and with wet grounds in there and th both baskets have come shooting out of the coffee maker mm -hmm. when both the chefs were in the kitchen making this huge loud noise and they run over to see what the heck was that? And there's the coffee baskets laying on the floor. So the female chef actually was only about a month and a half ago. She was uh, along her prep line. The prep line is this way and then this way. She was back here cutting and doing her work and the male chef, he wasn't here that morning, but his mug was sitting there. It was all full because he tends to leave it full from the day before. It was full, and it went flying off the table, hit the floor, and actually broke his lid. Mm -hmm. This is a replica of the first pilot's license. It was issued to Orville Wright. As you might have seen when the close-up came in, this is from the Civil Aeronautics Authority in June of 1940. We actually do house the very first one, not the replica, but the original in a, in a vault. Not on premises, but we do own it. We do have the rights to it, and it is ours. The Wright family is still involved in the Engineers Club. Their great-grandniece, Amanda Wright Lane, is a current member, as well as their, their grand-nephew's wife is also a member as well. So there you go, the first pilot's license. There's a great factoid that McCook Field was right across the river from us. It was directly across what is now Deeds Park. And Orville used to sit upstairs in the barbershop and get his hair cut while he would watch planes take off from McCook Field. So if that was the first airfield, that means that the first pilots were over at McCook Field. And it's a fantastic factoid that those pilots used to come here and have lunch in the dining room, which if you look at it technically, that would make us the first.